Hi guys, today I'm going to be painting this cute little bumblebee and I want to show you quickly a couple of the tools that I'm using. One is a sharpened paintbrush and the other one is an etching tool or a few etching tools that I use to pull out some of the finer details and I just want to show you them up front. So these are really great because they have really sharp points which let me get some really fine detail out and actually they're nail art ones so um, I'll put a link below if you want to get something similar. Okay so let's begin. I start painting with the background uh, with the wet and wet method. I'm using a mix of lemon yellow hue and ultramarine and I'm starting with um, around the leaves um, and you can see some of the time I've actually found my sketch to be a little bit dark so I've taken that back a little bit with a putty rubber. Um, I'm using my lovely Princeton brush which has got a really lovely big head so it stores lots of paint. I'm wetting the back here to make the paper lovely and wet so that it accepts lots of paint and um, creates some really lovely wet and wet effects. Being a touch more blue around that black petal to give it a little bit of definition. So now I'm going to create some little spatters everywhere because I love a loose feel. I'm covering the body of the bee because I don't really want lots of blue spatters all over the bee. I'm going to paint the centre of the flower next and I decided to use a wet and wet method so I'm wetting the paper before I begin painting. I'm using some really lovely shades of cadmium yellow and cadmium orange for the centre. I love the lovely egg yolk colour of these two shades, especially when they mix together. Although I think if I were to do it again, I'm not sure I would use the wet and wet method again, as I do think that all the colours blend a little bit too much in the centre. Next I'm going to add some green in the centre and around the edges of the flower as surprisingly it has quite a lot of green in the centre of it. And now it's time to add some pinky shades to give it a little bit more warmth. I'm making a start on the petals and surprisingly, even though they look white, they're not actually white. I checked the colours in Photoshop and they were sh the shades of green and blue and grey, surprisingly. I'm using shades of blue and green inside just as a hint of shade and a hint of colour. I'm trying to keep it as loose as I can so I'm not overworking those areas as really the main focus is the bee, not the petals. I'm adding a little hint of yellow on the left hand side here so that it blends in with the centre of the flower and a little pink at the bottom. Next I'm going to make a start on the bee and for me this is the most exciting part because this is where I have the most fun. I really want to let all the colours blend and merge together and create some lovely backwashes and cauliflowers 
and um, just I just really love the way the paint all merges. I'm using cadmium orange and cadmium yellow for the bee as well as Payne's grey for the darker areas. I know that Payne's grey is sometimes frowned upon as a colour because a lot of artists actually prefer to make their own darker shades um, from something like burnt sienna and ultramarine but actually I really love it because it's got that lovely blue hue and it's sort of got grey shades and I just really like it so I use it. You can see that I've been pulling some of the little edges, the bits of the beefer out with my sharpened paintbrush um, and actually that's worked okay but later on you'll be able to see that I use the etching tool which gives much finer little lines and I think I prefer the effect of those. Time for the legs and I keep with the Payne's Grey theme and also use the sharpened paintbrush to get some of the details around the edges. I find that one of the most important parts of painting for me is getting the sketch right. I spent quite a few years drawing sketches from eye um, but I did actually find that they weren't always as accurate as I'd like so for this B I used a proportional scale divider to um, get something more accurate and if you're interested in how to use one of those then I have another video that discusses that. Here's my little etching tool and hopefully you'll be able to see the finer details that it lifts out. It's much more accurate than the sharpened paintbrush and I think I definitely prefer the effect because it gives the little hairs a lot more definition. I'm just touching up some of the Payne's grey areas with a little bit more paint to give it a little bit more interest um, having darker and lighter areas. and also pulling out some of that little fur on the head. Next I'm going to paint the proboscis. Is that what they're called? Anyway, so I'm using a wet and wet method here so that they're not precise lines because I wanted something a bit more blurry. I'm going to attack the wings next and these were actually a little bit scary because I wasn't sure how I was going to paint them so that they didn't look really fake. I'm using a shade of ultramarine and Payne's Grey and also using a kitchen towel bunch top to uh, pad some of the details so that it gives it a little bit of texture. And they're not all one colour because obviously they're see-through so I'm painting in a, a little bit of yellow and some of that Payne's grey in the darker areas so that you can see the bee's body through the wings. In a minute you can see that I'm using a cotton bud to soften some of the edges. I've just wet the end and then I'm just like going around the edges to give it a little bit more of a softer look rather than a hard line. Okay, and it's time for some spatters at the end now. I didn't go crazy here, but I really love adding lots of splats and splatters to my paintings. I'm using two brushes to get some lovely different sized drops. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me.